Hello and welcome to another episode of the Startup Sessions. Uh, my name is Colette Broomhead and I'm a startup strategist. I work with people who want to create an online business, um, doing something they love and to uh, quit their nine to five for good. Um, and tonight uh, is all about uh, one key foundation that you need when you're just getting started with your business, and that is an email list. Um, so um, let's, uh, I'm gonna hang around for a minute or two just to see if anyone wants to join me live. I see someone already has, hello. Um, do say hi. And um, I'm just gonna take a moment to um, sort out my screen. Um, Attempting to use BeLive again, uh, those of you who uh, watch regularly will know that um, I use BeLive um, for some of my lives. Um, I've never yet managed to work out how to connect my microphone. I can connect my um, webcam, but for some reason it won't let me connect my microphone. So I'm using my laptop mic, but hopefully that should be fine. Hey, Wendy, lovely to see you. Um, so... I think we're just about sorted. Now, if you're watching this live or if you're watching in the replay, um, let me know if you already have an email list. Um, and if not, if it's something that you are planning on getting started with soon, I'd love to know. So let me know. Um, so before we dive into, um, so I'm talking about email tonight and in particular, how you can get your first 100 email subscribers. Um, so before we dive into that, um, I dug out a few interesting email statistics because after all, email is one of those things that I think people put off. Um, it's something that um, people aren't perhaps sure why they should bother with. It seems like a lot of effort, um, perhaps even a lot of cost. Um, and um, a lot of people tend to sort of prefer social media and think, well, I don't need email because I've got Facebook, I've got Twitter, um, so I'm not, I'm not going to bother with the email side of things. So um, before we actually start talking about how to build an email list, I'm going to talk a little bit about why you should build an email list. Um, so let's start off with three um, excellent statistics um, that I have for you. Uh, so I'm just checking my notes here in case you're wondering why I keep glancing off in a different direction. So first of all, <clears throat> let's talk about return on investment or ROI as it's known um, in sort of marketing terms. Um, the return of in on investment for email, um, for every dollar spent on average, um, the ROI is $44. So for every dollar spent, you will get $44 back. Um, obviously, that's an average, um, but not a bad uh, return. I'm sure you'll agree. And in fact, that ROI is three to four times bigger than the ROI that you'll get with social media. So email really is a powerful tool, especially when it comes to selling. Um, now, how much is an email address worth? So every time you get an email, someone subscribing to your email list, how much on average is that email address worth to your business? Well, according to Experian, um, every email address is worth on average around £84.50. Um, pretty impressive figure, I'm sure you'll agree. So I hope that's helped. Um, convince you that email really is worth your while. Um, social media is great for relationship building and for um, building online visibility, but when it comes to actually really um, strengthening a relationship and building a relationship with potential customers and ultimately making sales, then email is where it's at. Um, you may hear people saying all the time that email is dead, um, but it is refusing to die. Email is still an incredibly powerful tool um, that you should have in your marketing kit. Um, so if you haven't already started your email list, then do make it a priority. Um, most people once they get further down their business, um, when you hear them um, being interviewed or, um, you, you know, when you see interviews in magazines, um, so many people say that they wish they'd started their email list sooner than they did. So now is your opportunity. Get started if you haven't already. And if you have started and you're still, um, you know, struggling to find subscribers because it isn't easy, um, then 
hopefully this is really going to help you. Um, I, for one, when I first started um, my my first blog, my food blog back in 2014, um, I just thought that that building an email list was as simple as signing up um, to an email service and hooking it up to my blog and having a subscription form on my sidebar. I did that, subscribe here, and then sort of sat back and waited for the subscribers to flow in, um, which they didn't to my shock and horror. And it's only since then that I realized um, that actually it takes a little more than that. And that's despite the fact that I used to actually work in email marketing. So you'd have thought I'd have had a bit more sense, but uh, apparently not. Um, so it, it isn't easy, but um, once you know how, it becomes a lot simpler. And so that's what I'm gonna talk to you about tonight. So I'm gonna take you through the key steps that you'll need um, in order to get those first 100 subscri subscribers and beyond. So let's start off with number one. Now this is really important. And uh, if you watch many of my Facebook Lives, you will know that actually this is number one um, in most of my <laughs> Facebook Lives, no matter what it is I'm, I'm, I'm helping you with. And that is understanding who your ideal clients are. Um, and the reason that this is key is because you don't want just anyone on your email list. The only reason, or the only way it's going to be as impactful as I've described, um, and, and it's going to be that powerful selling tool and marketing tool, is if you're actually speaking to people who are your ideal clients in the first place. Um, so an email list that's full of people who don't actually care about your business is useless. You want people on your list who care about your business and who have signed up because of something related to your business that they're interested in. So first and foremost, understand who your ideal clients are and make sure that it's those people that you are trying to get on your email list and that you're targeting. OK, so that's point number one. If you have any questions along the way, whether you're watching this live or in the replay, then do feel free to um, pop them in and I shall um, make sure that I answer them um, either now while we're still live or afterwards um, when I, I'll come back and check. So do feel free to ask questions. And I'm just going to check um, that I am um, where I should be and that I am still there. I did a Facebook Live last week in my Facebook group and it was only 20 minutes into the live um, that I discovered um, that my mic wasn't switched on and I was muted for 20 minutes. Um, so I don't want to make that mistake again. OK, there I am. There I am. That's good. OK, so our second point. So who your ideal clients are and make sure it's those people that you're trying to get on your email list. Um, it can sound a bit obvious, it's a bit like, well, duh, but actually the temptation can so often be, whether it's for your email list or for social media or for whatever, the temptation is to um, just go for numbers, to go for quantity over quality, and quality is always more important. Better to have a small email list full of ideal clients than a massive email list full of people who couldn't care less about you or your business. Um, so number one, stay specific, target your ideal clients. Number two, once you know who your ideal clients are, you want to create something that's going to attract them, that's going to kind of lure them onto your email list. And that's all about finding a quick win, something um, that's going to help them um, quickly and simply. Um, so first of all, you need to understand what those key frustrations and challenges are that your ideal clients are going through. So that's probably going to involve a bit of research. You can either talk to your ideal clients directly and ask them. Um, or you can um, do things like looking in local in, in forums where they're where they're at. You can look at um, you can even go on to um, something like Amazon and uh, look at the book reviews for books related you know, in your niche to see what questions people are asking, what frustrations people are talking about. Um, there's lots and lots of different ways, but basically do your research and find out what those key frustrations are that you can help with. And then think about something that you can do that's going to give people a quick win. And usually that's going to come in the form of something like a checklist, a cheat sheet, a template, um, a swipe file, um, something like that, something where you can take a problem that they're having and you can solve it really quickly um, so that they can literally 
take your um, your lead magnet as it's known or freebie or um, whatever you want to call it and you know have a result from it very quickly okay so have a think about what that might look like um, for you in your niche and for your ideal clients so once you know that once you know what that quick win is that you want to solve um, then you actually need to turn that into your lead magnet so this is where we're creating a resource that's going to give that quick win to your ideal clients so whether it is the checklist the template or whatever um, you actually need to create something um, now the best tool that i have for creating my lead magnets is something called canva um, which you may already have heard of i love this tool um, it's there's a free option uh, which is more than sufficient for your needs for creating a lead magnet so um, canva.com go and check it out if you haven't already and have a little play with it it's 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 pretty addictive i'll have to say um, but it allows you to create um all sorts of things you can create checklists you can create sort of um you can even create ebooks um but for the sake of this um i do suggest keeping it short and sweet um especially for your first lead magnet keep it something nice and simple not too complex you don't want to be spending too long to create it and your ideal clients don't want to spend too long um working through it they want a quick win um so go check out canva um, and see what you can come up with for your lead magnet. Now, once you've created your lead magnet, um, you want to give your ideal clients a place where they can actually sign up for it, where they can actually give you their email address and sign up for your um, lead magnet. And so you're going to need a landing page. Um, now, a landing page is, you'll, you'll have been on plenty before yourself I'm sure is the page that you go to where you enter the details and it'll tell you about whatever it is you're signing up for it'll have a little kind of um, you know sales spiel about it and then you'll enter your, your name perhaps and your email address and you'll click download or submit or whatever it may be and um, it'll you'll then receive your um, lead magnet whatever it is you signed up for um, in your inbox and so that's what you need to create for your ideal clients as well. Now, um, you can do this by just um, creating a page using your um, content management system, WordPress, um, or whatever it may be. Um, or um, the best way to do it um, is actually to create a separate landing page. Now, the reason for this is any page that you create um, using your normal kind of system like WordPress is going to have um, your normal page layout on it. So it's probably going to have a menu on there. It's probably going to have sidebar on there and the various kind of bits and bobs that you have on your standard page layout. And all of that acts as a distraction um, for potential subscribers. And what you want is something as distraction free as possible, where the only thing there that they can look at is your lead magnet and that sign up form. And so that's why we, there are separate um, kind of landing page services that you can use. Um, now, there's plenty out there. There's things like lead pages, Insta pages. Um, I use something called um, Thrive um, landing pages, which, which comes as part of Thrive Themes, which is what I use for my um, my whole blog and my whole website. Um, but go find what works best for you. Um, some email services actually um, have um, a function where you can create a landing page as part of your email provider. So my email provider is ConvertKit and they, they allow you to do that. So you can actually create a landing page through them. So find whatever works best for you when you're just starting out. You know, it doesn't need to be super complex. Um, it doesn't need to be super expensive. Um, so do your research and find what works best for you. Um, and once you've created your landing page, you're then going to um, obviously include a sign up form on there and you're going to connect that to your email provider. Now, if you don't have an email provider yet, don't panic. Next week's show and next week's blog post is going to be all about how you can choose the perfect provider for you and your business because there's um, a whole raft of choices out there and it can get a bit overwhelming knowing what you should be looking for um, and knowing you know how on earth to choose um, so that's coming up next week so if you haven't already signed up for an email service don't panic if you have brilliant um, it's just a case of connecting your landing page um, to your service um, 
And then you need to drive people to it and you need to actually tell people that your lead magnet exists and you need to get people to sign up for it. Um, and there are tons of ways you can do that. Um, so first of all, you can do it through your own content. So whether that be blog posts, podcasts, videos, whatever it is that you do to create content in your own business. Um, create a lead magnet that is or create content that is relevant to the lead magnet that you've created. Now, if you're just creating one for now, you want that lead magnet to be fairly general, uh, a kind of fairly high level um, um, freebie that's going to um, appeal to pretty much all of your ideal clients. And um, therefore, it would be relevant no matter what content you're creating, if that makes sense. Let me know if it doesn't. Um, Wendy, you say Canva is a great tool. It really is, isn't it? I love it. Um, so you want your so you want your freebie to be fairly kind of um, general, unless you're creating lots. But for the time being, let's assume you're just creating one. Um, so there's something that's going to be kind of a general salt, you know, um, quick win for your ideal clients. And then when you're creating content, you can then um, use that freebie, that lead magnet, as, as what's known as a content upgrade. So you might write a blog post. Say, for example, uh, let's talk about me and my business. One of my lead magnets is a blog post checklist. Uh, and basically, that checklist, it takes you through all the steps you need to plan, create, and promote a blog post. And um, so let's say, for example, I'm writing a blog post about blogging. <laughs> um, I can then... Um, Perhaps it's about how to get more traffic. So I've written my blog post about how to get more traffic. And then very naturally, I can say, and if you'd like um, this great checklist I've created that actually gives you a step-by-step -step guide, you can get one here. And you see how natural that is. People who are reading your blog post are already interested in blogging. Otherwise, why would they be reading it? And so for them, it's like a natural next step that they're going to then want to get that checklist as well. So you see how it's just a really nice flow. So think about how that might work in your own business about the, the topics that you're going to create content around and how those will naturally link to your lead magnet and how you can naturally talk about your lead magnet as part of that content. I hope that makes sense. Again, let me know if not any questions I'm happy to answer. Um, another way that you can promote your lead magnet is actually um, on social media. Um, so if you've got a Facebook page, Facebook group, whatever social media channels you're on, um, then tell your followers about it. Let them know that you've created this fantastic resource and how they can get their hands on it. Um, using other Facebook, other people's Facebook groups as well can also work. Um, although obviously you need to be careful with that so you don't come across as spammy and sleazy. Um, there's plenty of that around. I'm sure you've come across it. So make sure you're checking um, the group guidelines, the group rules, and you're not doing anything that you shouldn't. Um, most groups tend to have spy groups on a Thursday. If you're not already a member, business class, come and join. Um, so check out, keep an eye out for those promotional threads um, and get, you know, talk, chat about your um, lead magnet in there. Now, one thing not to do is just to drop, drop the link without saying anything. I see that an awful lot. Um, and you want to tell people why they should be signing up. What's this going to do for them? What's it going to help them with? Um, make sure you give, you know, create a little um, introduction for it rather than just dropping the link and running because people are much more likely to sign up if they understand what it's there for and how it's going to help them. Um, so social media, that's another great one. So we've got your own content. We've got social media. Um, there's also third party um, third parties, should I say, where you can where you can promote it. So, for example, if you're guest posting, if you're doing a guest blog post and we talked a lot about that um, a couple of weeks ago, um, then you might want to um, use um, a link to your landing page rather than your just your home page uh, in your author bio. Um, and that can be a great way to um, increase your subscribers. Equally, if you're um, getting um, being a guest on someone's podcast, um, the same can apply. Um, whatever you're talking about, um, if you have a relevant lead magnet, you can just bring that up naturally. You know, oh, and, and by the way, I've got this great resource. Um, if you're interested, you know, I'll send you the link so you can put it in the in the show notes, um, whatever it may look like. So so that can be another great way to promote your freebie. Um, 
So there's tons of ways. I hope that helps. I have created a blog post on this as well. So if you'd like more information, I will pop a link to it um, in the comments when we're finished. And also, I have created a lead magnet just for you. Um, so this lead magnet is a lead magnet checklist, and it takes you through step by step um, how to create and set up your very own lead magnet. Um, so if you are interested in getting your hands on that, then I will leave a link in the comments for that as well, and you can go and grab a copy. Um, so I hope you found this helpful. Um, again, do say hi if you're watching this live or in the replay. Uh, pop any questions down and I'll always come back and answer them. And I shall see you next week. Take care. Bye.